my friends, before we get into today's video, if this is your first time visiting this channel, please consider subscribing and hitting that bell notification so you become part of the notification squad when we upload a new informative or entertaining video. The Nerf Chopstock and Twin Slice both average retail for $12.99 each, and here are some of their features. The Chopstock features an end strike stock attachment point so you can affix it to other blasters. It has an adjustable length so you can actually make the axe longer or shorter, and it also includes foam tip on both of the axe blades. The Twin Slice has an end strike tactical rail so you can affix to the bottom of other blasters, as well as two foam removable saw blades that are used for throwing. All right, my friends, let's first take a look at the chop stock. And this actual attachment for the stocks of your blasters comes in three configurations. This is the longest configuration. By simply depressing this button right here and sliding it in, you can get it to its medium configuration or compress it again and bring it all the way down. And of course, it's in its smallest configuration. So my friends, the chop stock has one thing I'd like to point out if you have young kids like I do, is that the majority of this attachment is hard plastic. Pretty much everywhere is hard plastic on here with the exception of this little foam attachment piece which actually compresses revealing hard plastic and it has it on the back end as well. So if your kids are kind of roughhousing, decide to have a melee war, somebody might get hit with hard plastic. I can pretty much guarantee you because kids don't really watch what they do. They just kind of go off and they get excited and you guys know the rest. I could definitely see a child crying if they get hit with the hard plastic on this. So it's just something I'd like to caution parents about. Now, having said that, aesthetically, it looks amazing. If you put it on the, you know, scavenger, which it's actually designed for, it's actually really cool. But here's what I'm talking about, about the length. At its longest point, it's not really comfortable for me to use. I mean, let me back up and show you this. But if you put the attachment down to its smallest point, it's actually pretty comfortable. And the foam actually uses as a nice rest for your chin. So, actually, it's designed for the scavenger system, and I think it looks really awesome on here. But you know what? They're attachments. And like any Nerf attachment, we want it to be compatible with all of our different blasters. So we're going to run through a quick bunch of blasters and see how the chop stock looks and if it's compatible with other Nerf blasters. All right, let's begin with the base retaliator. Take your chop stock, go ahead and slap it on. And as you see, it fits fine. So go ahead and fire until you no longer have any weapons. Then take your weapon, turn it around, and melee the heck out of it. No, I'm just kidding, guys. Don't do that. The Modulus ECS-10. No problem on there either. Keep in mind, this is one of the examples when I extend it, it just gets a little ridiculous in the length. So that's what I'm saying. It's probably better in the stock form at its shortest configuration. Taking a look at the Demolisher. Fits on there with no problem. Really cool. Looks good. And we'll simply break it down to the Recon MK2. And it fits on there with no problem as well. Keep in mind, it did not work on the stripe. You try to put it on the orange one, it just pops right off. It does not, no matter how hard you put it, it won't go on. Just to be safe, I did test it on a couple of the other stripes and had the same issue. So it will not fit on the stripe if that's what your heart was set with, with the chop stock. <laughs> Guys, even take your ion fire and go ahead and slap it on the ion fire and you actually have another blaster that it'll fit. I mean, it does look kind of weird on the ion fire, but hey, kind of cool. Go ahead, extend it, turn the blaster around. <laughs> oh, God. That's why we don't do that one with the chop stock. All right, let's move on to the twin slice before I hurt myself. All right, my friends, the twin slice attachment is made for the underneath tactical rails on blasters. So in comparison to the chop stock, it'll actually have less blasters that's actually compatible with. It is non-mechanical, meaning that the saw blades do not actually spin or rotate, such as the crosscut, which actually did that by trigger pull to make the blade actually spin. These blades are actually meant to be removed from their sleeve and thrown, like such. So basically, you're going to take your scavenger or whatever blaster has this underneath feature. You're going to take the twin slice. You're going to go ahead and slap it onto the tactical rail. Then take your loose saw blades. There is a little knob that sticks out, which will actually kind of lock it into place with the center hole on the saw blade, slide it into the pouch, and the one thing beautiful you're going to notice is how the angle of the saw blades actually angle away from the barrel. So if you're using blasters where the barrel actually stops here, it won't affect performance of the blaster. So simply go ahead and engage in the fight that you're in. If you want to take out a saw blade and throw it, 
be my guest, go ahead. That's what they're there for. And overall, it's a really sharp looking attachment on the front of the Scravenger in particular. So my friends, let's go ahead and check the Twin Slice on a few different type of blasters. One of that I do like it on in particular is the Rapid Strike. I think it looks really sharp on there and um, gives it an overall really nice design. Looking at it on the Modulus ECS-10, it actually will fit on there as well and air is no problems on that one. And if you wanted to stick it on, say, a stock retaliator, you can go ahead and do that as well. And as you see, performance will not be impeded in any way, shape, or form. But once again, we do run into a problem with the twin slice with regards to the strife. This little extra notch right here on the attachment, which is just there for aesthetic purposes, actually bumps into this portion of the magwell that actually sticks out, not allowing this little knob to actually click in between the tactical rail component to lock it onto the blaster. So you simply just can't get it to actually lock on fully. It will pop off like just like you saw. So my friends, unfortunately I have to report that the twin slice and the chop stock will not be compatible with the Strife, but it's pretty much doing well on all of the other different blasters. All right, my friends, let's throw a few of these saw blades, even though they're light, see how far we can get them out. We'll throw them a variety of different ways. It's gonna be no time lapse. And this is not going to be 100% technical. Let's just throw them and see what we can get out of them. Let's go. All right, so that one's at about, I don't know, 30 feet. Eh, maybe 40. All right, this time let's throw them more like a Frisbee. I think it's safe to say maximum distance is anywhere between... 30 feet and under, I'm getting close to 40, but that's about the max that you're gonna get with these things. But indoor range, you're gonna be much closer than that. So these actually be pretty fun to play with inside. So my friends, my overall opinion of the chop stock and the twin slice is, I would definitely say if you're a huge fan of the Scravenger survival system, then you know what? These are two fantastic looking attachments to complete the look on the Scravenger and give you a ton more of options on how to outfit that blaster. Keep in mind, if you're going to use these attachments for other blasters, the chop stock may be more up your alley because of the fact that it has more compatibility with more blasters. That's where the twin slice suffers a little bit because not all the blasters have the underneath tactical rail needed in order to use this attachment. Now, as far as the saw blades go, they are light and they do travel all right. I mean, I got them out to 30, 40, throwing them outside. Indoors, anywhere between five to 15 feet, they're gonna be really fun to use. So I'm not really anti either one of these attachments. It really just comes based down to your thoughts and your opinion and whether or not you think the money is worth it for the little one in your life. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, I had to take a break from cleaning up and I wanted to pump one out and just get back into the groove a little bit. And as you can see, we had a couple bloopers in the vid, but I thought they were funny, so I left them in there. See you guys on the next video. Hope you enjoyed.